How's it going, pilots? This is Nick at Part Time Pilot. Today we're going to talk about how to read airport information on a sectional or terminal area chart. We're going to use an example of Santa Barbara Airport seen here in this photo. And so the first thing we're going to talk about is this symbol here. It's the airport symbol. Now they can be blue or magenta. A blue one means that it's got a tower and it's controlled. If it's magenta, it means it's uncontrolled. Next thing that will give you some information is the shape. I have all the possible shapes seen here. The unfilled circle is going to mean that it's not a hard surface runway. Okay, now the filled circle with the runway outlined inside is going to mean it is a hard surface and it's anywhere from 1500 feet to 8069 feet long. And then the third possibility is going to be just the runway outlined in bold either blue or magenta and that is again hard surface runway greater than 8069 feet long you also see on either one of these you're going to see a little open circle you could see it or you could not in santa barbara as you can see over here there is not a uh, open circle but if you do see the open circle it's the approximate location in reference to the the runway of a VOR or Vortac. Okay, so there's one more thing that the airport symbol can show us, and it's these little knobs on the side of the circle, as you can see in Santa Barbara. That means that the airport and the uh, runways, they have fuel services available. Okay, so moving on, the next thing is this little star right on top. This is this means that a rotating beacon is in operation from sunset to sunrise at this airport. So Santa Barbara has fuel services, it's hard surface, it's 1,500 to 8,069 feet long, and it has a rotating beacon from sunset to sunrise. Okay, moving on, you're gonna see a CT. So CT means control tower, and it's gonna follow it, it's gonna be a frequency, and so the controlled tower frequency for Santa Barbara is 119.7. Now the next thing you might see is a little star following that frequency. And that star means that it operates part time. And to, to know the details about that time, you're gonna have to look in the AFD chart supplement for Santa Barbara Airport. So you would see that and you say, okay, it's got a control tower, but it probably doesn't, it doesn't operate full time. So, you got to plan ahead, look in the FD, and see if it's going to be open while you're there. Next up is we're going to have this uh, 13 right here. It's going to be the airport elevation in feet. So Santa Barbara elevation is 13 feet. Obviously very low. It's right uh, next to the water. Next, you're going to see, you may or may not see an L. If you see an L, this means that runway lighting is in operation sunset to sunrise. And then again, you might also see a little star and that star before the L means that lighting limitations exist. So if you see a star, it means limitations exist and you should see the AFD or chart supplement to get the details on those limitations. And then finally, following the L, you're going to have the number and this is going to be the longest runway in hundreds of feet. So Santa Barbara's longest runway is 6,000 feet, 60 add two zeros. 6,000 feet and we know that makes sense because the blue airport diagram said it was between 1,500 and 8,069 feet. Moving on, on the third line, uh, you may or may not see a RP. If you don't see an RP, then you can assume that the runways all operate on a left traffic pattern. If you do see an RP, it's then going to list the runways that operate with a right traffic pattern. So it's seven 33 left and 33 right all operate on right pattern. Again, if you see a star, this means that there's special conditions exist and you need to look again in the chart supplement. Okay, so, so you're gonna see a C, almost like a copyright C, but it's a filled in circle with a C in it. This means that this frequency is also the CTAF frequency, the common traffic advisory frequency. Okay, so we know from the star right here, that limitations exist for the tower. So it's not open full time. So this frequency when the tower is open is the tower frequency. When it's closed, it's the CTAF frequency. 
Okay, we're going to hop back down to this second line here and where we see a 122.95. So the frequency listed here after our elevation and lighting information on the second line is going to be the Unicom frequency. So the Unicom frequency for Santa Barbara is 122.95. So what is the difference between this CTAF frequency and this Unicom frequency? So CTAF is for pronouncing what you're doing when the tower is closed. So you would say Santa Barbara traffic, uh, Cherokee 840 whatever entering left base okay so you you're not expecting a response but you're pronouncing what you're doing to all the traffic at Santa Barbara Airport the Unicom frequency is a frequency for a ground station where you could expect a response now some Unicoms are very high level and will give you a lot of information and then some might just give you wind or open runways or fuel services. Okay, so back up to this first line here is you're gonna see ATIS followed by a frequency, and this is simply the ATIS frequency, ATIS frequency, which is the Automatic Terminal Information Service, which is gonna give you the weather, uh, up-to-date weather um, every 30 minutes or so for Santa Barbara Airport. And then out here, up here is just the name. So Santa Barbara SBA is its identifier. And if this were to be surrounded by a solid box, it would mean that traffic pattern has special requirements. It's 14 CFR Part 93. So you're going to have to look again in the AFD to see what those requirements are. Okay, so that has been airport information on sectional and terminal area charts. If you have any questions, please comment below. And please also check out my Instagram at part period time period pilot. I have these all broken down there. And if you subscribe, I will give you a PDF of all my Instagram so you can actually do control F and search for keywords. And it's a great little study guide. I have almost over 40 posts on there now of all the stuff you need to know to get your private pilot's license. So subscribe and send me proof that you subscribed and I will send you that over so you can get to studying. All right, thanks.